Well, how many of you have been on a cruise? Raise your hand. How many of you would like to go on the cruise? Raise your hand. How many of you have never been on a cruise and you don't like to go on a cruise, but you just like to cruise through life? Let's get some hands going up there. All right. I think we've got everybody in oneness here. What we're talking about today is this wonderful experience within our life that's afforded to us that the scripture opens up in such power and truth in the text that you read today. There was a cruise ship captain who over the speaker began to alert all of us that, you know, we're going into some stormy waters and uh, it, the ship could be tossed to and fro a little bit. In fact, he hated to say it, but the word hurricane was eminent. We were going to be sailing right through a hurricane. But don't worry, he said, just relax, because you know what? What he tried to explain to us is this, that oceanographers say that storms whip up all the time on the upper levels of the water, but down deep below, deep within its calm, silent currents flowing. And just whatever happens on the surface is sometimes delivered down to the lower levels. So just relax and just know that everything's going to be fine. Wait, 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 I said, just relax. Because what's been delivered on, down to the bottom that's been on the surface is many a ship. Many a thing is sunk. What we're looking at, the Titanic. Can we go on the list of many others? And you're telling us, don't let my heart be troubled. Well, that's today's text. Don't let your heart, consciousness, your thoughts in any way be troubled. Yet we live in a world that's offering us all kinds of troubling information, troubling thoughts and ideas. We're in so many scenarios every day. When we have the experience where something's challenging us, we get a little worried, get a little stressed, we get a little troubled within heart. That heart being that place where intellect and feeling coming together, join together. Don't let that be troubled. Don't let your thoughts be troubled. Don't let your emotions be troubled. Easier said than done as we look at that scripture because a lot of us would say, you know, you don't know what's coming at me. You don't know what I experienced this past week. You don't know what's going ahead that I've got to face. All this it can be very, very stressful in our world. Yet what we find is this passage saying, let not, do not, don't allow this troubling to happen within the journey of your day-to-day -day experience. How? How do we not let our hearts be troubled? How do we not get caught up in the emotional stress? How do we not get caught up in the frenzy of today's world? How do we not get caught up in all of the things that would be a natural expression of negativity or in stress, worry and fear? How do we not get caught up that? Well, let's look. Let's look at those captain's words as he talked about the surface and the deep. You know, he offered us some good advice that we might look at that's found spiritually for our lives as well. Because what we find is surface and the deep, the surface waters, the winds can blow on, they get tossed to and fro. The deeper water is a slow moving, maybe silent current that's flowing, undisturbed, receiving in all that the upper level would drop down into the lower depths, surface and depths. Talking about one ocean, there's not two oceans. There's not an upper level and a lower level. It's just one ocean. But it describes it in ways that help us to understand us, our human nature, our consciousness. There is a surface consciousness and there is a deeper consciousness. We look at one being that which is uh, sort of uh, the conscious and the other being the subconscious. We've tossed all kinds of words and terms. So let's just paint that word picture for us. As we think about the surface and we think about the deep, we find this within our own thinking and our own mind. Surface stuff comes at us. All kinds of things may come to rock our boat. They may come at us in all different strange and unusual ways experiences that we're having, someone upsetting us, someone saying a word that maybe hurt us, someone, you know, maybe snubbing us in some way. On goes the list of emotional things we could list. Surface stuff. And then it's delivered down into the deep, the deeper parts of our consciousness where we find that those things resonate and are held and are, we hold on to them in the subconscious. Here we find that these are two distinctly different types of activities carried on, but there's one mind, not two minds, just one. It's filled with surface thoughts and deeper 
subconscious thoughts. If we understand that, we're understanding then the secret to developing our faith. The secret to developing a faith that's dynamic and strong, that helps and carries us through the challenges of the world on a day-to-day -day basis. We understand that this makes up our consciousness. Now, we talk about consciousness. And for some people, like, what? Consciousness? We don't talk about consciousness in church. We've never been conscious in church. You know, <laughs> we're not invited to be conscious in church. You know, we're just sleeping through the sermon, waiting for it to transpire so we can get home and go out to lunch. We didn't know that we're called to be conscious. In fact, that's what we're talking about constantly. Consciousness, awakening. That's right. Your whole scripture, the whole spiritual journey of your life is an awakening. Wake up. Wake up. Become enlightened. Become alert. Become aware of the dynamic power and presence that's within your life. So when we say what makes up consciousness, it's these surface thoughts that come at us and the deeper knowing that's resonated within us, that's formed based out of the choices we've made and the thoughts that we've entertained within our lives. So let me just illustrate this. We think about that surface mind or surface thoughts in such a way that, you know, when you have a, someone gives you a telephone number and you dial it, you think about those numbers, don't you? Now, those of us under 50 would say, what do you mean, dial? We punch in. Those of us over 50 say, yes, we put our finger in the little spinner and we dial the numbers. Some of you remember those days. Yes. We think about the number, though, don't we? 404-219-6075. Very conscious of it. Very clear. What happens is then we look and we think about each number and we respond to it differently. And that's very conscious subconscious is like scott who loves to play the piano who learned little by little the notes where middle c is the octave notes how to play a scale looking consciously thinking about his finger placement always and then one day it becomes more subconscious it's gone deep down in settled into him that he goes i don't have to think about it i don't i just know in my inner knowing exactly where to put my fingers and I know exactly when I look at the music where middle C is and I put my hand there and I begin to play it is amazing how people who have lost eyesight can play the keyboard they just know they know they've learned they've experienced it enough that they have it deep within them that's passed into a deeper sense of mind leaving that surface going into the deeper into the subconscious scripture says as a man thinks so he is so it's the level of our thinking that's shaping who we are, how we live, and how we experience things. Because without thinking it, or uh, without thinking about it, the deeper mind, the subconscious mind, is acting on so many levels and revealing who we are. Because it comes out through the subconscious of things you entertained on the surface that settle down into the conscious, into the deeper subconscious, where now you act you move, you breathe from all that to a certain level. Surface mind is that mind with which we're directing a mind. We're sort of characterized by the words that I choose. In the surface mind, it's things like we judge, right? We look at something. We judge whether it's good or bad. We're thinking about it. Surface mind, we decide, right? And in surface mind, we weigh out reasons. We contemplate. We think about it. And we dip, deliberately choose the thoughts that we'd like to think about. You know, you've got some thoughts and you kind of let that go. I'll think about that later. And then there's other things. Oh, let me think about that now. And so we get really engaged in it. Now, deeper mind and then is that habitual mind that's based on the choices that we've made on what to think. It's sort of that home of that inner knowing that settles within you, that you have had received numerous experiences, made numerous choices, had no, numerous levels of understanding. It's all kind of settled down deep. And you don't really think about it. You just know and you just act. Have you ever been to that place where, you know, you're with someone and says, you know, I just know it to be true. I just know this. How do you know it? How do you know it? I just know. I just know. I, I have this based on my experiences, based on the thoughts, based on my um, years of experience thinking about something, it's just all come together to uh, formulate an inner knowing. 
wonder why people react the way that they do. It's because sometimes we've developed these things through the surface thoughts we've been entertained. We develop a subconscious body of belief and of thinking. You have people who have a negative disposition. Do you ever think, some people just, oh, you're just born that way. Others with a positive disposition. Oh, you were born positive. You were laughing and giggling when you came out of the womb. You were already upbeat and and happy. And others, well, you were, no, I'm going to tell you this. We are learning every day about our dispositions. We make the choices. People aren't born positive. You know, every baby starts out crying, don't they? Uh, negative experiences they slapped on the behind. You know, it's not like it's a real positive thing that's happening for them. But they learn optimism. They learn to be positive. Others may learn to be negative. The beautiful thing is we can unlearn anything. That's a beautiful thing. We can change any kind of patterns that may have developed within our lives. We can change them. We have this opportunity that's so beautiful. Our choices create these then foundations that we build on. When we choose to do something, it's sort of like launching something to happen within our mind. And then the mind obeys to exactly what you've launched. And then it creates the experience. And then you have this experience that says, wow, I guess I thought. And look what's happening within me based on the surface thoughts that mind now puts into action that now comes into being and creates your experience. Let's just say, have you ever thought that you met a person and you say, this is a really bad person. I don't like to be around them. Every time I see them, I kind of cringe. I step away. I'm really uncomfortable around that person. And that's your level of thinking based on an experience you probably had with them. And so you said, you know what? I just don't feel comfortable. And the more you've thought and entertained that, do you know that every time you interact with them or see them coming to the street, you... Ooh, I want to step away. I want to go the other direction. I don't want to be near them. I don't want to be in the room with them. It's creating your experience, isn't it? Those thoughts that you had have formulated within you. They've launched something. And now you're being uh, obedient to those thoughts subconsciously. And they're creating your experience. Sounds a little bit heady, doesn't it? How about you do the opposite? Maybe there's someone else, the same person, but you're a different person looking at it and said, they're a fabulous person. My experience with them has really been great. And every thought I have now is I want to be in the room with them. I want to be next to them. I want to be by them. I enjoy them. Creating a total different experience with the same person. You see, thoughts will launch Something that transpires then within our lives that creates our experience. And this is how beautiful it is when we understand this within our life. That then this deeper mind then is the storehouse of every experience that we've ever had or passed through life. And we've stored it away. It's the interaction of all these past choices that you've had and experiences. How you've chosen to experience them. And then they're being brought into this present moment. So think about it. You have an encounter with someone? How did you choose to experience it? What thoughts did you entertain? Did you allow them to resonate within you? If so, then the next experience you're going to have is going to be based on that. Now, let's apply this all to our lives and our faith. Let's just say the first time you prayed and you asked God to give you that puppy when you were six and you never got that puppy. Suddenly now, your thinking says, God will never answer my prayers. I probably didn't beg enough. I didn't plead enough. I didn't scream and holler enough. I didn't wake God up enough. And so we formulate that kind of idea. That now from here on out, then our experience is, you know what, I'm hesitant to pray. I'm hesitant to believe in prayer. I don't know that it really works. Why bother to pray? Let's just give up on prayer completely. You see how that happens to unfold in our lives? Now about then, maybe you've had a positive experience. And as you prayed as a small child, and you prayed for that Barbie doll, and yes, young man, you got that Barbie doll. And you were glad that you got it. 
Uh, and so suddenly you were like, I want an answer to prayer. Prayer really works. And my experience is, oh, hallelujah. I, you know, God is looking on my side and providing for me. Even though my mom and dad said, I don't know that Barbie's really right for you. But, you know, I got what I wanted. Exactly. And so now I'm a believer and my faith has changed. My experience has changed. You see? Now we could look at each one of these experiences in our life. It's the choice we make on every encounter, how we will think about it that gets settled deep within that will form our next experiences and shape with us. So as we begin to welcome and think, I'm going to think good thoughts about everything. I'm going to look at the positive side in every experience. I'm going to train my thinking. I will not let my heart be troubled. I will instead be awakened to the good that's there in every experience. I will re-picture, re-visualize, re-image every experience I have to allow the positive to be there because then what's settling down into the depths of our subconscious will be recreated in another time in a beautiful way because the experience of our thinking will be this. Now, this deeper mind is obedient. That subconscious is obedient to every thought that you have placed within it. Now, think about that. Every thought that you've placed within the, goes into the subconscious and it responds, it obeys to that kind of, you know, you learned how to walk, didn't you? Some of us. Not everybody is good at, good at it all the time. Some of us trip, stumble. We have a difficult time, a difficult moment with it. But we've learned you know, through the experience and through the positive aspects of it, we enjoy walking, don't we? We don't get out of bed and go, oh, dagnabbit, I've got to move my feet. I've got to walk again. Oh, this is terrible. I have to think about this. It's so hard. It's so No, we've learned to walk. And the subconscious, the deeper conscious, is simply responding to that which you've learned, which surface has put in and responded from deep within our lives. It's like training a horse. You train a horse, well, that animal follows the trainer, the training that has been given to them. The powerful animal, this beast, this wonderful horse, this large animal then responds and is obedient to the way that has been provided for, the direction that has been given by the trainer. The horse only knows how to obey. When the horseman gets on and starts to begin to ride, directing the horse, the horse responds to the direction that's been given. It's been trained. So it is that that which we're putting in to the subconscious is those things that we've allowed to be there to resonate within this. And they shape our life even when we're not aware of it. Hurts, wounds, anger, thoughts of being a victim, unforgiveness. We allow it to settle down within and then we respond on day-to-day -day actions through a subconscious way that creates the experiences that we have. So we want to make sure that everything that we put in, in thought, everything that we welcome in thought, is that which we'd like to see manifested, right? We have the power to choose. So we could say, you know what, I'm not going to think that thought. I'm going to change my thinking. I'm not going to welcome that thought. I'm going to change how I look at this. I'm going to change everything because I'm the one in control. How many of you have ever seen a loom? My aunt, Lucille, had one of these big looms, a weaving loom where she loved to create rugs. It was a beautiful thing. You see that loom get going and it start moving back and forth and threading in. Uh, she would be threading in all the threads and she would take rags and old fabrics and rip them up and she'd make rag rugs. Ever seen a rag rug? And you'll see those old olden days out on the farm. She would make beautiful rag rugs. Everyone got one for Christmas. You know, you wonder what you get from Aunt Lucille. Oh, a rag rug. Oh, different. Thank you. Uh, you know, the loom responds to the weaver. The loom does not decide, I think it's going to be a red rug today. Nope. The loom doesn't say, I think it's going to have this wonderful pattern, this zigzag going through. Nope. The loom doesn't do any of those things, doesn't make any of those decisions. It obeys the weaver. She made the decisions. My aunt would decide, it's going to be a blue rug today, and it's going to be blue fabrics and blue threads that I put together, and it'll be of this style, and it'll be a look of this 
character about it. You see, she was the one who decided the very patterns that would be woven together in the rug. And every day, our mind weaves the pattern of our life. Every single day. If we don't like the pattern, well, it's foolish to cry about it, isn't it? It's really silly to cry about it and wish we could change when we realize, wait a minute, I have the power to change. I am the weaver. I am the one who can make the decision. I can make the choices. So if I don't like the way that my life is unfolding and I don't like the stress I'm going through and I don't like the challenges I'm facing and I don't like all this kind of experience, I can change my whole thinking about everything. Isn't that kind of amazing? Isn't it wonderful that we have this amazing gift? We have the power to create change within our own lives. And it changes every aspect about us. So how do we keep our minds then from being troubled? It's wonderful that this passage is out there. Don't let your mind be troubled. How do we do it? That passage says, if you believe in God, Jesus says, believe in me. If you believe in the divine power all around, then look, because I am the revelation of that divine power. I am the one who's a teacher, example, trying to show you the way. Jesus said, I am the bread. Doesn't mean he's a loaf. Doesn't mean he's wheat bread or wonder bread or anything like that. That's not what he's talking about, is it? He just said, I am the bread, meaning I am that which sustains you. I am that which, I'm speaking that which sustains your life and nurtures you. I am the light, not a light bulb. I am the light, he says, and so are you. When we understand that, we understand Jesus saying, if your heart is being troubled, believe in God and believe in the very teaching and the words that I've been sharing with you. Because when you entertain them in thoughts on the surface, they filter down into your subconscious and form and create how you act and respond at a moment's notice without even thinking. When you embrace when you look at these wonderful teachings and bring them into the body of your life in such a way that we take this passage of Scripture says, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you. In other words, think as Christ did. Think as Jesus did. Let the same way of thinking, the same consciousness, the same approach to life that Jesus embodied in an exemplary way for us be the same way you do. That's how we let not our hearts be troubled. Let not our thoughts be troubled. Because we entertain the very teachings of Jesus, the very words, the essence, the very example that he gave for our lives. So let's just think about it. We talk about this passage of scriptures, all things are possible. All things are possible. How much, how much do we entertain that thought and how much, to what level or degree do we believe that? Because some of us, it's all things are possible, but we really walk and live some things are possible. And others, not anything, everything is possible. And others, everything is impossible. You see, it's what level of thought you want to take concerning the teaching of Jesus. Some of us dismiss it altogether. Some of us will live it to a certain degree. Others will embrace it wholeheartedly and say, this is my mantra. This is how I live. I will not be troubled because I know all things are possible. So, when someone came to me and said, Pastor, here's my problem, and blah, 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 and he unfolded and described it, I said, wow, oh, isn't it wonderful to know all things are working together for good? Oh, how can you be so dismissive of my pain and my sorrow and everything I'm going through? I want you to wallow in the, in the depths of the low levels of my life here. I'm just, don't you know I'm a victim and I'm suffering? And I'm saying, I know that, but I know something greater that formulates every aspect of our life, all things are possible. All things. I didn't say some things. I didn't say maybe. I didn't say nothing is possible. And I didn't say it's impossible. I said all things are possible. And so what we do is we raise our consciousness to this level where the surface now embraces this thought. And we say it over and over again to a level where we have embraced it enough that it settles within our lives. How did you learn? How did you learn at school, by the way? How did you learn? Uh, how many of us learned by rote, right? We learned by rote. Our teacher would say, read this passage. Run, Dick, run. Run, Jane, run. 
After a while, we understood that Dick was chasing Jane. And then we like, okay, no matter that Jane's running. She, you know, Dick is running, Jane is running, everything's going on here. We learned by rote, didn't we? We learned two plus two equals four. Two plus two. Over and over again, we learned that. So when the teacher asked, how do we achieve four? Well, two plus two was the right answer. Years ago, I lived in Kenya. And one of the big challenges was at seven o'clock every evening in the equator. Bam, the sun goes down. It's like someone pulls the shade. Like God unplugs every lamp there is in the world. It just seemed like darkness hits. There is 6.59 and bam, 7 o'clock the lights go out. It is darkness in equatorial Africa. Now, many times we'd be out in the villages and I would have the opportunity to teach late into the night. Not that I have a tendency to go late in the night. Come on, work with me. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the sermon might get a little longer. And we'd go there and it would be dark and it was time to go back to the villages. And in the dark, it was hard to find your way. And the guide in front of me would be walking and I'd be grabbing onto his shirt like this. Whoa, 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 don't leave me, don't leave me. I don't even know where the step is. I don't even know where to walk because it is so dark. There's not a street light. Barely is there a light from the moon coming through the vegetation and the trees all around. I can't find my way. And I said, how do you know? How do you know how to get back to the village? He said, I have walked this path so many times. I can do it with my eyes closed. You see, that's walking in a deeper consciousness of knowing the pathway of life. So it is in our life, we learn by rote. And if we keep saying all things are possible, all things are possible, you face a challenge, you face an obstacle, you come against something that seemed to be troubling in your life and you just keep repeating over and over again, all things are possible. You know what's going to happen? It then by rote becomes that which you embrace and your natural instincts, your subconscious will say, the next time a crisis happens, you go, hmm, all things are possible. Instead of, ah, I'm scared, I'm frightened, I'm terrified, I don't know what to do, I'm going to fall apart, the world is falling, the sky is falling. No, you just had this wonderful response. All things are possible. Everything is folding for my highest and good. We learn by rote in how many of us in uh, the religious realms of our churches and our spiritual upbringing have heard, you know, the devil's going to get you. The devil's going to... I have heard so many sermons on that growing up. It's ten ways that Satan's out to get your life and destroy you. You know, it was like, whoa, I knew more about the devil than I did about God. And so, you know, when it was all this kind of rote over and over again, devil's on your tail, devil's going to get you. They're going to be, uh, you'll burn in hell for that. How many times have you heard that one? In church, you're going to burn in hell for that. You know, you're going to burn in hell for that. A lot of people say, ooh, uh, you know, I ain't coming to church because all I hear is I'm going to burn in hell for all the things that I do. How about shame on you, you're bad. You know, we hear these over and over again. And if you've been a preacher, son like me, you've been in church 52 Sundays out of the year, Sunday nights uh, service as well. Wednesday night prayer meeting and the annual three weeks of revival that went on every single night. You all know it. If you're a preacher's kid, you know kind of what every service embodying over and over again, learning by rote things that made me have feelings that said, maybe God isn't that loving God. And then I began to experience a world of faith and a spiritual tradition that began to say, God is that higher power lifting you. And I began to hear, you're welcome to enter the kingdom of God, and it's been there waiting for you. Come on home. And I began to hear, blessed are you, for you are all good. And over and over again, I had to relearn through the process of rote those negative expressions and thoughts that had been impounded in my head that made me feel like I was nothing of value to awaken to this beautiful truth that I am of value. For I'm created in the likeness and image of God. Anything that is repeatedly chosen by the surface mind eventually becomes stored in the deeper mind. The scripture says, Thy word, meaning God's law, God's promises, is a lamp unto my feet. The more we look at that very promises of God, these principles of law, they become a lamp unto our feet. And we think, well, wait a minute. Why do I need a light around my feet? They're not that pretty, and I don't really want to illuminate them. So is that really what? No. 
Your feet is your space where you are grounded, your grounding. The promises of God help you to understand. They become like a light to say, where you are right now, this is holy ground. God is with you. The promises are there to say your feet are standing on holy ground. It's a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our pathway. An illumination that shows the journey ahead. A light unto our pathway that is the life that's unfolding for us. When we understand these promises, it says, this is the pathway, this is what will unfold for you. Isn't that pretty powerful? So the more we, by rote, hear the word of God, hear the promises of God, hear the message of Jesus, hear the teachings that Jesus offered to us. The more we hear them by rote, the more they become a foundation for our life and the more they become that illuminating light that says, I know how to walk in a world of challenge. I know how to walk in a world of trouble. I know how to walk in a world that may be filled with all kinds of emotions that be disrupting to me. I walk in a way that my heart is not troubled in any way. I choose to know, I choose to think, I choose to allow, I let it sink. Say it with me. I choose to know, I choose to think, I choose to allow, I let it sink. That's it. I choose to know the very promises of God. I choose to think, contemplate, welcome them, repeat them, meditate on them. I choose to think, I choose to allow it to sink in so that from there on out my first reaction when someone says something that is challenging to my world it's like all things are working together for good god is here the presence of god is working in us the highest and best is unfolding for us it becomes a natural format for us because i choose to know i choose to think i choose to allow i let it sink when you think about that, that's the journey of our whole spiritual life of building faith for us. How important it is that the surface mind sees and evaluates and chooses what shall go deeper into our mind and takes that material given to it and weaves then the patterns of our life. So what happens is we can choose a bridge over troubled waters. How many know that song? Like a bridge over troubled waters... I will ease your mind. Ooh, I love that picture. That word picture in that text of that song, the lyric that says, like a bridge over troubled waters, I will ease your mind. And that's it. The thoughts that you choose are going to formulate and build block after block a bridge that's going to help you over troubled waters that will ease your mind. And it will be natural thinking for you, a natural unfolding for you, for the very teaching of the ages. The very truth of Scripture is this, to help you have that ease in thought, ease in mind. In Philippians chapter 4, 8, it says, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, lovely, and of good report, think on these things. That's right. The surface Oh, the surface waters, the surface mind, the consciousness that comes to you, your way of thinking. Well, there's a guideline for you, already laid out for you. When you want to know, what do I think about today? Well, then we go through the checklist. Is it true? Oh, I'll think about it. Is it honest? I'm going to think about that. Is it just? Oh, of course, let's entertain some thoughts about that. Is it pure? Well, then, okay, let's meditate on it. Is it lovely? Is it of good report? Those are the things I will think about. Because they will sink deep into my inner knowing to the subconscious. And when the world wants to be rocked, I know my bedrock, my foundation is full of the love of God, the strength of God, the knowing of God, the presence of God. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen.